Now this is one of my favorite shots I've seen in any of these videos. It's such a simple effect, but what impresses me so much is how creative they've used these simple effects and layered them up to really create a lot of impact. That's what really impresses me with these videos. Hey FX Pack, Ross here from Flatpak FX, helping you unleash your creativity so you can create better and more engaging videos with video effects. Now the video opens with some very nice cinematic shots here. The shot I want to point out in particular here is this shot where we can see that we've got a few different layers going on. The first is we have Eric standing on the edge of this rock and then we have these dark clouds in the background here with the lightning bolts. Now I would say that what you're seeing on screen right now, most of this would have been shot in this single shot. So we have the clouds in the background that is exaggerated using a bit of contrast on that area. The rain has been digitally added. We're not seeing any other effects from the rain in the rest of the shot. And you can see he's also added this lightning bolt here in the background just to add a bit of dramatic effect to the video and it just looks really nice. Another really nice transition we have here are of these road lines as they transition up underneath this car wheel. Now I would say looking at the angle these have been shot, we're actually dealing with two separate clips here. The first is he's shot this clip here of this yellow stripe in one separate shot and the second shot we can see there's a bit of a transition over to the second shot here where he's continued a mask around the edge of this yellow line as it transitions underneath the car and we can see very clearly where he's transitioned and the reason I think it's done in two separate shots is this exact frame here we can see that perspective is off for that yellow line. It's very slight and it's the only thing that gives it away that it's done over two separate shots. Otherwise, he's just digitally cut this yellow line out and added it in post. But we can see here there's a little bit of an edge which gives it away as it's two separate shots. Then we come into our first major effect here where we have these Polaroids that are frozen in time. Now this is a simple freeze frame technique where you have the people just stand still while you're moving the camera around. It gives the perspective like they're frozen in time as the camera is moving around the scene. Now another giveaway here is we're using two separate shots. You can see a slight blurring here on the right of screen as we're getting an overlay of two separate shots being masked together. And then the Polaroids have been digitally added to that shot. And then a really nice fade transition across into one of the Polaroids which then goes straight into the video. We have another really clever transition where he has his finger out and it's separating the water in the waterfall. And I would say that this shot here is one shot of the waterfall, then he's digitally added his finger in later by using shooting it on a green screen or something like that. And then he's just done a little bit of an edge feather as it goes into the water to make it look like it's separating as the camera transitions through. Now this is the stuff that really impresses me with these videos. It's that ability to think creatively. It's not necessarily what it takes to make the effects themselves. It's really impressive the creativity that these guys are really exploring in their videos. And this is the point that I really want to make to you guys at home that you want to try and start to get into this mindset when you're creating these sort of videos and video effects. Because ultimately, just because you can use the program doesn't mean you can make these effects. It's that creative process which really holds the power in these videos. We have another really impressive shot here, which I don't think there's anything digital about. I think this is the best that Norway has to offer as far as its spectacular scenery. We also have this flag being added probably digitally into the back of this rock. I'm not sure if this is a famous site where a lot of people have been, but I would say this looks like it's been digitally added into just by using a simple 3D track and then adding the flag over the top. Again, we've got a lot of those really fast cuts which Eric loves to do in his videos and they just have and add a lot of impact to the video. This shot here I think is just really clever in the way that he's created this freeze frame effect. Now we have one drone shot here and then he's freeze framed it 
and just continue to animate that path of the position as it moves forward with a little bit of camera shake or movement to make it look like the camera is still moving or the drone is still flying but the shot is actually frozen. I think another level that could have been added to this is just to animate the waterfall in the background. That would have just taken this effect to the next level but it looks really good the way he's already done it. And then he's also added this clever little effect here of the people in the car where again he's freeze framed it, then he's zooming back with a slight bit of parallax I can see on the edge of this chair. And then he's got the two guys in the car just to kind of move with that movement, which I don't know if they've done that on purpose or he's just picked a part out of the video where they're already doing that and added that over the top. And it just makes it look like it's two seamless shots as time is sort of frozen and moving on. It's just a really, really clever way of using the creativity to really maximize the impact of the effect. Now, I absolutely love these time-lapse shots where we have transitioning between two separate clips. Now, the first is he's got this beautiful time-lapse here in the background of all these clouds. I love these sort of time-lapse. And then you've got this second shot where it's him standing on the edge of this rock and then he's masked the two together. You can see that this is a second clip here where we can see where the edge has been formed. So we've got a little bit of a edge feather going on here. And another really big giveaway here is this water in the foreground. We're not seeing any of that time-lapse effect being copied across onto this. Now you could do that if you created a Luma mat or an alpha mat, which I've covered in a few videos before, created a highlight section through here, then mirrored or flipped that shot over the water to create a really nice sort of smooth reflection, which would just take it to that next level again. But even still, not to discredit Eric in any way, it looks absolutely fantastic and he's done a great job. I love this shot here and this transition. I just think it looks amazing from the day to night. And I would say, again, this is two separate shots. He shot probably this sky in the background in one and then digitally added it over the top using a series of masks. The other thing we've got here is we've also got this reflection going on down here, which makes it look a lot more realistic. Now, this is one of my favorite shots I've seen in any of these videos. It's such a simple effect, but what impresses me so much is how creative they've used these simple effects and laid them up to really create a lot of impact. That's what really impresses me with these videos. He's using a glow effect to reveal the road in the shot. Now there's a few things going on here. The first, you can see he's added a time lapse of the night sky over the top. And this, what you're seeing here, would have been the original shot. Then what he's done is he's using most likely Sabre plugin for this. This is probably the only way to get that proper glow effect. He's created a simple mask where he's just followed the line of the road all the way through the shot. Then he's added the glow over the top. Now to remove the road from the shot, what you could do is take a still frame into Photoshop or even in uh, After Effects and use the clone stamp to paint out those sections of the road. Then as that glow effect comes over the top of the video, we're then using that mask to reveal that layer underneath and thus the road underneath as well. I just absolutely love this effect and I think he's done an absolutely amazing job doing this thing. So well done, Eric, on that one. I just love the music choice in this. I think it goes so well with all the effects. This has to be definitely one of my favorite videos that I've seen. Now I love how he's taking drone footage here and just enhancing it using a little bit of camera shake. Now I am going to be doing a tutorial on how to digitally add realistic camera movement to a static shot. So something like your drone would be perfect for this, where it's just got a little bit of that camera movement to make it look just more realistic. Again, this is a great effect here, really creative how he's using just a simple pan up shot of the waterfall in the background, but then he's masked the waterfall out and animated it in on the same shot. It just looks really good, it has a lot of impact. The transition down of the clouds here is another great shot. Again, it's thinking about a common theme between shots. 
So here he's got two shots with clouds in it. So how can we transition those two shots together? Because all it requires at this point is a simple mask straight through the middle with a bit of feather and then you've got a fantastic transition. Now another really interesting transition here where we have a simple digital camera roll and pan through the different shots. So it's just a matter of creating a few masks on each of your shots, then creating a 3D camera which has a roll and pan through it. We have some simple masking techniques here. So this would have just been one shot which you're seeing here, which would have been a wider shot. Then he would have stood in that shot, he's done his hand movements or the pose that he wanted to do. He's then moved out of the shot and just simply taken a time lapse of all of this as well. Then what he's done in post is he's put it into a new composition. He's added a 3D camera, zoomed in or cropped in on that shot and added a nice sort of camera sort of roll into his shot. And then to finish some really nice transitions here, again, we're using those camera transition techniques of layering shots together with a few masks. So we've got one shot here of the paddle. We've got a mask running along the edge of this boat. We then have a second shot which would have been lined up nicely underneath that with the camera transitioning or rotating over the top. We've then got a third shot as he's created another mask into a third shot here of these plants or ferns as the camera is pulling back onto a fourth shot where he's drawn a mask around the edge of this rock to create a really nice clean pullback to make it look like one seamless transition. Overall, a really, really well made video. I love a lot of these effects and especially that road effect is just done so, so well. So great job, Eric. And I really highly recommend checking out his channel, which I'll link to in the description below. He's very underrated as a video creator. He deserves a lot more credit than he's really getting. Now, if you got value from seeing this breakdown video, then click on this playlist here on the side of the screen to watch more video breakdowns. It will help you understand how other video creators use video effects to get the maximum impact and engagement.